Hey, good evening, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be the final Philly series preview of the year because our Phillies unfortunately faltered at the end of this season, to say the least, um, and were not able to capture the division when they had the best chance this year due to Braves injuries and off the field issues. Even though the Braves made good moves at the deadline, the Phillies blow some less saves, have a better conversion rate on the save as well. Plus, also just have a better defensive team. But plus, also, the big thing is scored more runs. Since the Phillies had 51 games this year, thanks to this one guy, Nick, on his uh, Facebook group. I don't know if he wants me to mention his whole name, so I won't mention the whole thing. But 51 games he put there in which the Phillies offense failed to score more than two runs. You ain't going to win a division with that either. So that combined with defense combined with the saves issue, that ain't going to help you. But... I already talked about that on one of my Soapbox Enough in past videos. You can go check them out if you want to. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content down below or on the widget up above. But let's get into this series as we're going to break down the final series of the season, of which Ranger Suarez, a very good pitcher for us to at least get a win to be able to guarantee the Phillies will actually have a winning damn record after all of this. I mean, after all, the Phillies aren't even guaranteed to have a winning record because of how bad they played down the stretch um, in the September month. Again, September struggles for this Phillies team. But they got Ranger Suarez going at 7-5 with a 1.45 ERA. Against Sandy Alcantara, who's not good record-wise, but still good numbers-wise, 309 ERA and a 9-14. and That's obviously just because of the Fish's team. But uh, Ranger Suarez is a perfect guy to have on the mound. Obviously, was lights out last time. Pitched like Cliff Lee out there. Um, the last game out, and if we can get that from him again, then we'll get guaranteed to at least have a win, as long as we can score one or two damn runs. So hopefully we're able to score a couple runs, and Rangers able to keep limiting people like he's been doing all season, no matter what role he's been put in. And now we have a very good, at least four deep rotation going into next year, as long as Noel was able to bounce back. That's the big caveat, obviously, for next year, since you have Gibson, you got Suarez, you got Zach Wheeler, the beast, and then you got Aaron Nola if he's able to bounce back, and then whoever makes the fifth starter spot or you sign somebody. But those the pitching matchup for tonight. Now, let's go into the lineups. As always, for um, a while, we're going to have Odubel Herrera leading off, but he's playing left field tonight. Ronald Torres is batting second, playing second. Bryce Harper is batting third, um, playing right field, of course. Miller batting fourth, playing first. Didi, the shortstop, batting fifth. Freddie Galvis back at third base, batting sixth. Travis Jankowski back in there, batting seventh um, in center field. Andrew Knapp, Knapp time, is going to be catching Ranger Suarez tonight, um, batting eighth. And then Ranger Suarez, who actually has a better batting average than Andrew Knapp, is going to be batting ninth. Now, when it comes to the Miami Marlins, they're going to have young potentially future star Jazz Chisholm leading off. They're going to have Brian De La Cruz, who's been good since coming up, batting second. Luis Diaz um, batting third. Lewis Brinson batting fourth. Eddie Alvarez batting fifth. Peyton Henry batting sixth. Uh, Sierra Magnirus batting seventh. Um, Devin Marrero batting eighth. And Sandy Alcantara batting ninth. So that's the lineup for the Marlins tonight. Obviously, the Phillies just need to get scoring. They need to do some bashing and get some hitting going. Obviously, they're not going to have Reese to do it, but you're still going to have Harper in the lineup. You're going to have Miller, who's been good off a of righty. Alcantara might be a guy that he's actually going to be able to take some advantage of and actually get some jump on and actually be able to do some things against. So let's see what the hell he is going to be able to do. But let's go into the rest of the series as in Game 2, the Phillies will have the TBD, which is either going to be the bullpen game or you would assume uh, they might just go with a Hans Cross or um, they might go with an Adonis Medina again. I would just go with one of those guys. We're out of it now. You might as well start one of those guys. Might as well start Kraus since he's the guy that you think is a future prospect that could be your fifth starter and then build up from there. So that's the guy I would start because Medina seems like he's more of that journeyman that's going to travel between the minors and the majors and pick up some things for you here and there when needed. But as of now, I don't know if I've seen more in him than that until he shows more than that, which could be next spring training, have you, but he hasn't shown it yet. Other than the one year he went off in the minors and obviously won the pitcher of the year, but that's in the past. It's more what have you done for us 
lately, and if you come to Hans Kraus, it seems like they're definitely higher on him getting him in this Howard trade and trusting him in a pennant race game than they would be on a Medina. So I would just put him in there when it comes to tomorrow's game. But for the Marlins, they got Jesus Lazardo going, the former A's lefty that looked really good when he first came up. This year he's struggling uh, five, nine, five and nine with a 690 ERA. So hopefully the Phillies are able to hit him. The bugaboo there is obviously our Philly struggle against lefty. So hopefully that will not prevail and they're actually able to hit him if they are not able to get the win tonight to get the win tomorrow to at least guarantee we have a winning record this year. And then worst thing, worst case, um, if the Phillies have to guarantee a winning record um, on Sunday, at least to have a winning record for the first time again since 2011. Zach Wheeler's on the bump, our Cy Young candidate, who has a 2.780 ERA against Pablo Lopez, who has a 3.03. So hopefully we got Ranger Suarez, we got one of the youngsters, I would assume, starting the second game, and then we got Wheeler. So we got two guys we want in there. But like last series, two guys pitched well enough to win the game, and then Gibby struggled in his, and the offense didn't score enough runs. You got to score enough darn runs. You got to get going. You got to get churning. And hopefully, like somebody else brought up in the Facebook group earlier, I can't remember um, who it was, but when I've been reading those groups, hopefully, like people have said, this team will play looser because I agree with that. Normally, when you do get knocked out, like you see the Orioles playing spoilers at the end of the season on some teams, as well as other bad teams in the league uh, playing spoiler. That's because you're so loose. You got these young guys playing for jobs next year. You're not playing for anything anymore. You're just playing for trying to compete and show them what you can do for next year. You know you're out of the postseason. So hopefully the Phillies can use that looseness, the only benefit you get from blowing this, to at least be able to hold on and have a winning record for the first time since 2011. This has been a preview to the Phillies and Miami Marlins series, and then a look at into game one, of course, at the beginning of this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. This has been Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Boric. Go Phillies. Please finish the season with at least a winning record for us. Peace out, everybody.